Now you may have noticed a common thread linking together the first three episodes of Manos at the Movies, in which each one of these films so far has had a hot chick killing people. Now, there's a simple explanation for this, of course. I enjoy films where hot chicks kill people. But, you know what? I'm not one to just simply rest on my laurels and keep repeating the same uh, actions and ideas over and over again. I, uh, I don't want to be boring. So this time around, I'm going to do a complete uh, 180 and uh, bring to you a film that is incredibly masculine and macho and not in a stupid, cheesy, you know, Stallone kind of way. I mean a real m masculine film. Uh, and I'm talking about Ernest Hemingway's The Killers. Uh, this is from 1964, uh, starring Lee Marvin, Clue Gulliger, Angie Dickinson, uh, let me see who else, uh, John Cassavetes, Claude Aikens, Norman Fell, and Ronald Reagan. Yeah, Ronald Reagan. This film is so full of testosterone, if you're not careful, it's going to smack you in the mouth and fuck your mama. Now, let me explain why. The film starts out simply enough. Lee Marvin uh, and Clue Gulliger play a couple of professional killers. Uh, they go by the names of Charlie and Lee. Charlie is played by Lee Marvin. Lee is played by uh, Clue Gulliger. Now, they're hired to, hired to just take out this guy for 25000 uh, they walk into a school for the blind where he works as an instructor, teacher, somewhat. And they blow him away. Uh, they just walk up and shoot him, like, it seems like 20 times. I don't know how many times they shot him. But the thing that disturbs a veteran killer like uh, Charlie is he knew they were coming. He saw them and didn't move. He didn't blink. He didn't beg. He didn't plead. He didn't try to want to run away. He just stood there. Now, this kind of not only surprised, but dis I think disturbs uh, Charlie. And it gets him into thinking, like, who, who hired us to kill this guy? Why did he just stand there? What makes a person just face death in the the cold, detached manner that he did. Now, this starts the two of them on a trail that actually kind of turns them into detectives, where they uh, go step by step through uh, this guy's life. Uh, their their target, by the way, was named uh, Johnny North, and Johnny North was a ex uh, race car driver, and uh, he was partnered up with uh, Claude Aikens, and uh, he had had a terrible crash. Uh, and uh, kind of got, uh, fell, you know, by the wayside, really kind of went down on his luck. Uh, now, before that, he started dating this uh, girl named Sheila, who was, who was played by Angie Dickinson. And uh, she's kind of one of those girls that's just bad news. Uh, not a good influence, and, and a passive way kind of helped his ruin. Uh, at least uh, that's what Claude Aiken's character blames him, blames her for. Anyway, the 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 more they dig into this, the more that Johnny was connected to a huge heist of a million dollars, and they have a feeling that whoever hired him, hired them to kill him also has that million dollars, which by the way has never been recovered by the police uh, or anything like that. Uh, Anyway, I'm not going to be really giving anything away uh, if I tell you that uh, Ronald Reagan is the villain. He's the uh, one who hired them, and, uh, and also the plan of the heist. You'll pretty much figure that out almost instantly, uh, the way uh, the story unfolds. <clears throat> now, uh, so he's going after this for two reasons. He wants the money, and he's just curious as to... What could kill a man emotionally like that? And it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting story to see that kind of character take on. As a matter of fact, there is no heroes in this film. What we have is 
a battle of wits between killers and thieves. Uh, and the only sort of hero is Johnny North, who is a victim throughout this entire film. Now, uh, let me just go into some of the performances. Lee Marvin uh, is a terrific uh, actor. Well, he had uh, played... He's a former Marine turned actor, and uh, I believe his films ran from the 50s through uh, the late 80s uh, until his death. And he just plays tough guys with just this cold, matter-of-fact, you know, laser beam intensity. And and never over the top, like, ooh, look at me, I'm such a badass. No, he's just some regular guy who's just going to come over there and kick your ass. And don't fuck with him, because, you know, he ain't going to have it. Now, uh, playing his partner is Clue Gulliger, uh, a excellent character actor. Uh, Mystery Science Theater fans might recognize him. Uh, he was in two of their uh, films, actually. He was in the first Man Master Ninja, uh, where he played a corporate evil douchebag or something like that. And then he played the head of security in San Francisco International Airport. And I've even read from time to time that even the Mystery Science Theater actors really enjoyed his performances in those films, especially in San Francisco International. He's He's a very likable character actor. Uh, he is quite excellent. He plays his younger partner, and he just... He's always smiling in the film, which is an interesting difference between uh, him and uh, Charlie, played by Lee Marvin, because he is, like, stone-faced and serious and brooding throughout the whole film. And Clue Gulliger's Lee is just, like, kind of always sort of laughing at this private joke he's not letting anybody in on. Um, it's like he's one step away from killing anybody in the scene. And uh, it's not a friendly smile, let's just say that. Uh, it's not a smile like you'd see him do that and you go, Oh, well, let's hang out at the food court and talk about Doctor Who. No, it's the kind of smile that makes you think, Well, I should be running because that's a fucking psycho. Now, Angie Dickinson plays uh, the girl that... Uh, kind of gets all this bu uh, bullshit running for our, our hero, Johnny North. Um, she uh, She's kind of a bad influence and, uh, and does sort of partly lead to his uh, uh, the end of his career as a, as a racer, and she eventually invites him in on this heist uh, that has been planned by her on-again, off-again boyfriend, played by uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, playing uh, Jack Browning. Now, I have, I have a question. I watched the film, and I wonder, like, did she purposely lead to his early retirement so that he could take part in this, or did that just happen along the way? I don't know. Oh, uh, it's, it's kind of something to think about. Also, uh, this is also Ronald Reagan's last film before he began a career, of course, doing his greatest performance, uh, someone who believes in small government and lower taxes. But uh, he's actually pretty good as just this evil douchebag, actually. And um, I do wonder, you know, it may have been more interesting to see him play more villains. He played a lot of nice guy kind of characters uh, during his, his uh, time in Hollywood. And uh, it might have been interesting to see him play more villains. Anyway, I completely endorse this film. I love it. I've seen it a whole bunch of times. If you like, like, the 60s kind of film noir stuff, uh, I totally recommend it, and I definitely give it, uh, give it my, you know, blessing as far as seeing it. Uh, anyway, you just might want to be careful, though. This is not a film that's going to respect you in the morning. <laughs>